Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, preview event of uh, EA Sports NHL 17. Uh, really glad that you could, uh, could all come. Uh, my name is Christopher Ring, I work as um, the local communications manager at uh, EA Nordic. I met some of you, but uh, far from everyone, so I'm really happy to, to meet you guys today and uh, to get the time to, to talk to you uh, during the day. Um, I will kick off to these gentlemen uh, in a uh, um, very shortly um, to, to Sean and Clement, who are here from, from the studio in Vancouver, uh, which we're very uh, happy for, obviously. Uh, I'm just going to run through some, some practical information uh, about the content today. So, um, there's no embargo for anything that, uh, that you're going to see today. Um, so, if you want to write an article or uh, do capture, that's fine. You can just publish it uh, whenever. Uh, if you do want to do capture, uh, we ask you not to do it on the uh, uh, draft champions mode. Um, so, um, and that also goes for uh, taking pictures of the screens. So if you use your cell phone, you, <coughs> you can't take any pictures of the screens today. Um, but that's uh, basically the only restriction uh, that we have. Um, we have some issues with the networks on the PS4s today. So for the online modes, uh, and basically for, for draft champions, we're only going to be able to show that on uh, the Xbox consoles. So we're going to have a rotating schedule uh, for, for everyone so that you guys can check out uh, the draft champion mode as well as uh, play it on the PS4. Um, yeah, you all had lunch uh, already, I hope. Uh, if not, uh, there's food outside. Uh, bathrooms are if you just pass the buffet and to the left. Uh, and there's some coffee there as well. Uh, if you have any questions, just um, look for the people with the right <laughs> white wristbands. And I mean, me now you all know, uh, so she'll be able to help you with questions as well. Um, with that, I'll uh, kick it over to, to Sean and, and Clement, uh, let them introduce themselves. A bit more. Perfect. Can I add it? Uh, uh, maybe I'll just reiterate. So you can capture literally anything in the game. If you brought a capture unit, please capture as much footage as you'd like to capture. Uh, we're showing off the entire game today, so every single mode, every piece of content in the game is playable. It's not quite final. <coughs> Obviously, we still have a couple weeks before launch, so some of the content that will be available at launch is still being added into the game. Some of the feedback that's being uh, incorporated from the beta program, I don't know if any of you guys got to play the beta, but a lot of the tuning and feedback that we received from our fans, from people like you guys, uh, is still being added into the game for launch. So. Some things are not quite final, please bear that in mind. You may still run into a few bugs, you may still see a few things that are a little bit uh, a little bit tricky for pre-release, but other than that, you know, just uh, capture away, and again, like Chris said, uh, the only thing we're asking you not to capture is the Draft Champions game mode. Um, anything else, uh, please uh, take as much content as, uh, as your hearts desire. Um, and I'd be happy to introduce these gentlemen as well. Uh, they're the, the most important ones here, so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sean Ramjack Singh is the lead producer on AHL 17. Um, he played any of the games the last couple of years, uh, probably a familiar face. Uh, and Clement Kwong is another producer on the game. Uh, and between these two, uh, we should be able to answer um, most, if not all, of your questions. So I'll, I'll kick it to Sean. We're going to do a quick 10 minute presentation, uh, and then you, uh, you'll go hands on with the game, and, and you can. Uh, play away and ask questions once we get to the, the interview process later on, although do feel free to, to flag any questions you have as we go. Cool. Thank you. Thanks uh, Thanks for making time to come out. We're excited to be here. Uh, we were in Sweden a couple days ago, here today, showing off NHL 17. Um, I may look a little fresher than these guys. These guys have been on the road for about two weeks, went, went to Gamescom for about a week, and then Sweden, Finland, and, and we've got some more time here, so I'll be the freshest of the crew. Um, how many of you guys have a favorite NHL team? You're going to feel up the room a little bit. What's that? Two? Chicago. Yeah. Chicago. Chicago? Yeah. Anybody else? Who? No Pittsburgh over here. Yeah. Pittsburgh over there. <laughs> Anyone else some? Why Chicago? Uh, I don't know. I, I've been a fan since I've been a kid, so uh, maybe it's some kind of tra tradition. Or <laughs> I don't actually know why, why I'm so so big fan, but I think that they had uh, great players of the 90s and left them. Uh, 
It's always good to be a fan of a team that wins lots of Stanley Cups as well. <laughs> yeah. We also have a favorite. You know, Pittsburgh over here. We also have a favorite team in the NHL. Montreal. Montreal. Nice. Yeah. Montreal. Yeah. I used to be here in Quebec, so that's why. Yeah. Uh, we usually support the team where they have 7th place, but it's not great, so <laughs> probably <laughs> we're trying to Patrick Lyon is now there. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> we're trying to figure out who can stay for the presentation. Montreal fans are not allowed, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 we're from, uh, so we'll, uh, like you guys mentioned, we're from Vancouver, so uh, Vancouver fans. I'm a Kings fan. Kings fan. <laughs> Vancouver fans. <laughs> <laughs> so you may hear some Vancouver references as we go through the presentation. Uh, again, thanks for coming out. Thanks for making the time to come out with us. Uh, we're excited to show off the game. Uh, like Kevin said, quick little 10, 12 minute presentation for you guys. We're extremely excited about the package that we have this year with NHL 17. I'm going to say, so I've been working on the franchise, I've been at EA since 2000. We're working on the NHL franchise since NHL 09. Anybody play NHL 09? Go back to NHL 09? There you go. So, long time on the franchise. This is probably the biggest, or this is the biggest sort of year on year league for Moscow going from NHL 16 to 17. Uh, extremely proud of the game that we have here to show you. Um, so I'm going to go as quick as I can through the presentation. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we're going through, S keep it super conversational, and then afterwards the game's there for you guys to play and time for interviews and whatever else you guys want. So uh, with that, let's just get right into it. You guys don't mind, I'm going to pop in this corner back. just so I can get closer to the laptop. Uh, so like I said, this is a, uh, you know, we're, we're really excited about the package that we're offering this year. Um, I'm going to go through each of the kind of four categories in a lot more detail. Um, to start off with, this is the first year in many years that we're offering um, just new experiences, fundamentally new ways to play, new modes in the game, which we're really excited about, some completely new experiences. Uh, you know, we talked about HL9 when I hopped on the franchise. That, that was the year we delivered two new modes with the EA Sports Hockey League and Be a Pro. Um, a lot of people reference back to HL9 as being one of their favorite games because of the new experience we delivered. We're excited to be offering new experiences this year, fundamentally new ways to play the game. Also, um, with our existing modes, we built lots of modes uh, into the game over the past couple of years with our Via Pro, um, our Via Gems, um, our Hockey Ultimate Teams and things like that. So continue to build additional depth onto those modes so people you know, play in NHL and those have now become their favorite modes. So continue to deliver new experiences, new ways to play their fan favorite modes. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about customization, which is something we're really excited about as well this year and what we've done with customization. Gameplay is the foundation of any you know, games experience, the core of any games experience. So um, this year, continue to push our gameplay forward, really focusing on uh, control and balance and a couple new feature additions as well, which I'll get into. And then um, last year with NHL 16, we delivered uh, our new visual on ice trainer, which is an onboarding system, really making it easy for people to pick up the controller, learn the controls, get in the experience and sort of get to the fun fast. Um, you know, I mention this a lot of times, but people that haven't grown up playing sports games or haven't played games in a long time, they look at this controller and they're like, oh, look at all the buttons we have. And yet, uh, when we were in Sweden, we had the Elite controllers that actually have four more paddles on the back side of it. These things can be pretty intimidating for a lot of, for a lot of people. Uh, so it's important for us, for hockey fans that want to pick up our game, um, that they're not intimidated by the experience. They can come to the game, um, they can learn at their pace, learn the basic controls, and then advance to the more, um, advance to the more advanced controls so they can get the most of the experience. So our onboarding that I'll talk about today is not only for newcomers to the franchise, but all for, also for our experienced players to kind of get the most out of the experience itself. So we'll get to each one of these in a little more detail right now. So you, anybody play, uh, anybody played um, draft, the draft mode in FIFA or draft mode in Madden? So both those games came out with draft last year. Uh, so this year we're excited to have draft champions and we talk about those new experiences, those new ways to play. We're adding draft champions to NHL 17. Um, so for us, this is really about creating a simple way for people to, a different way for people to build a team, get comfortable building a team based on players and making uh, decisions on how they're going to craft their team together. Build your team, take them into game, get into game really fast, play a series of four games, and as you progress through the four games, you're going to earn rewards that you can then take into Hockey Ultimate Team. Uh, to start your hockey ultimate team career. So, great anyway, I'm going to show you a quick video that gives you an example of what Jeff Check-ins looks like. Uh, the video I'm going to show you is a little bit old, so working closely with our fans um, and through a bunch of focus testing, we've actually reworked a lot of the design since the video that you're going to see on the screen here. Um, the video has 20 rounds. Um, we've cut it down to 12 rounds so that each choice that you make is going to be more critical because you only essentially upgrade 
12 of your players. You're also going to see in the video here when I play it um, that the team down below is actually blank. If you play Madden, I saw some hands around Madden. Uh, if you play Madden, they actually start with a pre-populated team and then you select the players that you want to upgrade. So we've gone down that path as well. So you're upgrading 12 of your players. So it's it leads to some very interesting choices because um, you got to figure out how you're going to build your team. It's going to be more offensive, more defense, more defensive, more balanced across the first and second lines, and maybe have some weaker third and fourth lines. So really, really interesting decision you need to make. And again, for us, we want to make the draft champions both really accessible to everybody. So if you don't know all the players that come up in the choices, it's as simple as picking the highest number, the highest overall rate the player comes up, and you're going to guarantee to have a pretty good team as you go through the draft champion experience. So I'm going to show you this, this video. Like I said, a little bit data just uh, the, because of changes we made based on feedback. So the 20 rounds is now down to 12 rounds, and the players down here are actually going to be pre-populated. And you go through and you get a selection of four players to choose from, and you need to pick uh, which players you're going to upgrade from your base team. Once you have your team created, we'll give you a little overview of your team. How the selections you made impact your offense, your defense, your goalies. Call out your top players. And then get you get into game right away. And you're playing a series of four games. Like I said, the further you progress through the four games, the higher rewards you're going to get when you start your Hockey Ultimate Team. Uh, next one's Franchise Mode. So we've had be a GM in our game in the past, and we're rebranding it franchise mode. So be a GM is all about uh, being the GM of your team, building the best team possible to try and win as many Stanley Cups and uh, be as successful as you can on the ice. We're rebranding it, calling it franchise mode this year because we're breaking out beyond just the on ice part of it. Um, we're adding the addition of, we're adding owners um, into the franchise mode. So each owner is going to have their own personality and own expectations of you. If you're a rebuilding team, different expectations than a team that's like the Chicago Blackhawks who are trying to contend for a Stanley Cup every single year. Um, so the addition of owners, the owners are going to give you a budget. Owners like to make money. The teams are their, their business for making money. So it's up to you as the GM to turn a profit, make a profit for your owner. He's going to give you a budget to work with. You need to figure out how you're going to spend that budget to turn the highest profit along with being successful on the ice. So you can spend that budget. You can spend the money on player salaries, build the best team possible. You can spend it on marketing and promotional nights. So maybe your team's not doing very well on the ice itself, so fans aren't showing up at the arena, which means you're not making as much money. You can run promotional nights, do a free t-shirt giveaway night, give a bottle, do a bobblehead night, uh, which you'll also see represented in the game itself to try and get fans to come in. Um, then you have full control over um, everything from concession sales, um, upgrading of arenas, upgrading of parking lots. You can set your ticket prices. So if you find that the ticket prices are probably too high and fans aren't buying, maybe because your team isn't being successful on the ice, you can lower your ticket prices. Um, you can set the prices of hot dogs or soft drinks. And there's a, when you go through the game, please go through and see all the detail of franchise mode. But you can set essentially the ticket prices for everything. Uh, sorry, the prices for everything in the game. Um, and then you can also, there's some analytics in there as well. So you can actually see how your, each of the promotions, each of the different levers that you're pulling um, is doing relative to other teams in the league itself as well. And if you can't make a profit, you can't turn a profit, um, you can propose to your owner that you start fresh in a brand new city um, and relocate to a new city. And it's not just press a button and relocate. Um, we have a series of cities that you can reloc relocate to. And when you choose to relocate to a city, there's actually a negotiation that takes place with the city itself so that you lock in on the new terms um, in the new city. So uh, if you don't negotiate a great deal with the city, that's going to impact your ability to make a profit because of the revenue sharing deal that you cut. Um, in the new city to start off with. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about customization in a second, but you can imagine when you start fresh in a new city, you're going to want to start fresh with new branding, new colors, new um, new logos. So you can use leverage the customization that we added this year to rebuild the brand. So figure out what your new logo is going to be, how you're going to color your logos, what your primary and secondary colors are going to be, what your uniforms are going to look like, what your arena is going to look like. So it's a fresh start in a brand new city. So really excited about our franchise mode. Franchise mode, please, later on when you get hands on with the game itself, Go deep in the franchise mode just to see the depth, uh, play with those hot dog prices and <laughs> see how much money you can get from hot dogs. So I just want to show you a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of depth from franchise mode itself. Go Canucks. <laughs> uh, so state of the team, again, a rebuilding team or a cup contender, so different expectations um, based on the status of your team. You're always going to see how happy your owner is with you. 
here's all this, you know, some of the things that you can set prices for. You can choose to rebuild um, your arena, you can upgrade different parts of it, relocation. Lots of analytics just showing you how each of the different levers you're, you're pulling as you're trying to drive a profit for your owner um, are performing. So lots of depth with our franchise mode. The next one, who's familiar with World Cup of Hockey happening in the next area? You go, gets hands up, good. Uh, who's gonna win the World Cup of Hockey? I'm trying to fail yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Canada. Canada, thanks, Canada. see. Yeah. So, <laughs> Canadian fans can stay and everyone else has to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and Montreal does, yeah. Uh, so, we're excited, we're talking, again, when we talk about sort of new experiences, um, new ways to play, uh, draft champions won, franchise mode with the depth we added with the owners, and the World Cup of Hockey is an exciting one for us. Obviously, you know, lots of hands in the air. It's a, it's a great new venture between the NHL and the P NHLPA to get into international hockey, bringing players together uh, for a high caliber turn so early um, in the season. So the term, so our game comes out on September 15th. The World Cup of Hockey kicks off on September 17th. Fantastic timing with lots of interest around it. Um, the great thing for us is we're gonna have the tournament fully playable, which you'll see there. Uh, we just revealed it at Gamescom. The tournament's gonna be fully playable at launch. Uh, we're gonna have the authentic uniforms. So lots of fans have been asking for authentic international uniforms for the past couple years. So we'll have the authentic uniforms for the eight teams in the World Cup of Hockey. We also have the rights to the players, all the players in the World Cup of Hockey. Um, I guess which is most relevant for players that aren't part um, of the NHL or playing in any of the 11 leagues that we have in the game right now. Mostly uh, for the Russian players that are playing on Team Russia. So we have passing rights for those players which we can leverage the uniforms and the players' teams as well throughout the other modes beyond the World Cup itself. So uh, again, another exciting new way for you to experience NHL with the World Cup of Hockey. Uh, like I said, we went really deep this year with our customization. Um, in the past, we've added more customization for your players, so you can just customize the way that your player looks. This year, we've gone really deep with the, custom the team part of customization, so selecting uh, what your uniforms are going to look like, what your pants are going to look like, what your socks are going to look like, infinite ways to color each one of the zones on each part of the uniform itself. Uh, like in the past, we have more equipment options as well. And the big new addition this year is the ability to create an arena. Um, and within the arena, uh, you can literally customize everything inside of it. So we're actually going to do a demo after I finish this presentation just so we can show off some of the depth that we have with our customization. Um, anybody in here play the EA Sports Hockey League? So the EA Sports Hockey League is our online team play mode where myself and five of my buddies can take on teams from around the world. It's pretty like a virtual men's league, virtual beer league essentially. Uh, so we brought that back in NHL 16. And we really focused on balanced gameplay. When you talk about competitive gaming and skill-based gaming, we wanted to have that even playing field when, when, you're, when teams are playing against other teams. So we went to a player class system, um, where depending on what class, doesn't matter what class you choose, we work closely with our fans, with our community to balance each of the player classes. So it really becomes skill-based. In the past, when we've had the EA Sports Hockey League, we had a progression mechanic in there. And um, the more you played, the higher ratings you have for your players. And there was lots of imbalance in the players that were playing in the experience. Um, so again, working with our fans, um, they said they wanted a progression mechanic back to the EA Sports Hockey League. So with the depth of the customization that we'll show you in a little while, um, we're leveraging that customization as the progression mechanic for the EA Sports Hockey League. So as your player progresses, as your player advances, as your team progresses as well, you're going to unlock customization elements. Any of you that played in the beta that we had available uh, a couple weeks ago, we got a little taste of some of the customization and the progression mechanic that we have in the EA Sports Hockey League. So uh, again, really excited about sort of the customization, which we'll show you in a second, and how we apply that to the EA Sports Hockey League itself. So like I said, when you start off in the EA Sports Hockey League, you're gonna start off with the arena piece um, in a small arena and kind of work your way up to the bigger and bigger arena. So you know the teams that are the most successful in the EA Sports Hockey League are gonna have the elaborate uniforms and elaborate, elaborate arenas. You can customize, again, everything in the arena from the chair color to the sea colors, the railing colors, the wall colors, the jumbotrons, the special effects that come out of the jumbotrons or the different parts of the arena, the smoke, the fire. Um, people, you know, hockey fans love their goal horns, select the goal horn that you want. We have some pretty unique goal horns in there, uh, which we'll show you uh, as well. Pick your entrance song, pick your goal song, pick your, um, your after game song, pick whether or not you want to salute to the crowd after you, uh, after you complete a game. Uh, when a goal is scored, again, you like your goal song, you can pick the, the type of spotlight that you have on the away goalie after a goal is scored at home. So again, just lots of 
options with the customization. Um, so be a pro is a mode again we put in the game in NHL 09. It's really about you creating yourself. The vision behind this mode was you create yourself, put your name on the back of the jersey, and work your way through to the get to the NHL and try and win as many Stanley Cups as possible. Really build your legacy um, as a player within our game. And this year, what we're really focusing on is the presentation elements around be a pro and those moments throughout your hockey career. So we're talking about things like stepping on the ice for your first professional game or scoring your first goal in the NHL, or your first hat trick, or your 50th goal, or um, your 100th game, or your 500th game, or your 1,000th game, uh, having the silver stick ceremony in there for uh, if you've played those set amount of games, showing that mutual respect from the both teams uh, when you hit those key milestones. So it's really about bringing those key moments throughout your hockey career to life through audio, through overlays, through non-interactive sequences. i play a little video here and just give you an example of some of the moments that we have um, in the game this year. So the kind of hazing rookie skate, do a lot by yourself. So we'll talk to the trainer after you score your first goal so you can put the tape on it and uh, mark down the dates in the game. First win as a goalie, your first fight in the NHL. First hat trick, your teammates going nuts and the hat's flying on the ice. 500th goal and some of that mutual respect from both teams when you hit those major milestones. So really a focus on just bringing those moments to life in your hockey career. Next one is uh, Hockey Ultimate Team, which is our most played mode uh, in the game. And this year, uh, so we've had chemistry in the past, and chemistry is a system where um, based on sort of your, uh, the chemistry you have with your teammates and how well you work with your teammates, based on a bunch of different factors, you can get boost to your players um, and the ratings. This year, we've, we've gotten rid of the chemistry system. Um, again, working with our fans and our game changer program that we have, we come up with a new concept called synergy. And synergy is essentially about trait, synergy is a trait, essentially. Um, so my favorite one is the dirty dangler trait, so the ability to deke. And the way it works is um, each player or each player, certain players are going to have different traits um, that we call out and we'll set a threshold as for your starting roster. So if you, we'll say, if you have four dirty danglers in your roster, those four players or five players or six players, once you pass that threshold, they're gonna get a boost to their deking rating. Um, so we have 18 different synergies in the game that are both player-based and team-based. So it leads to really interesting choices because typically when you build your hockey ultimate team, you wanna build your team with the best players possible. Um, if you really are a guy who's good on the controller and likes to do lots of dekes, and you only have three players of your best players that have the Dirty Dangler synergy, you may choose to pick a lower rated player that has the deking synergy um, to give those players a boost. Um, and like I said, there's 18 different synergies for players and for teams. Um, so at least it's just, again, it's just different thought process, a different mechanic around how you build your team, something else to consider, so more depth mechanic itself. Uh, do you have a favorite uh, team synergy? Yeah, I like to pass the puck around and uh, shoot it from the point, so I like the long range bombers as a team boost. So with the long range bombers as an example, if we say if there's, you need six long range bombers to get that, that synergy boost, um, if you have six, seven, once you pass that threshold, all the players on your team for the team synergies are going to get that boost in their slap shot ratings. The other key piece uh, that we added to Hockey Ultimate this year is dynamic sets. So you know, as you start to build your teams, people start to build up uh, excess items in their collection. And this year with dynamic sets, it's, a, uh, it's basically a crafting system. So we'll, we'll put sets out, uh, we'll have sets there for the start, um, uh, once NHL 17 launches, but throughout the year we can create new sets as well. And as you complete a set, uh, we then take all those <coughs> items, uh, you lose those items and you get a higher value item in return. So I'll show you a quick example of a Vancouver Canucks set. So assume you guys don't like the Vancouver Canucks players, uh, you can finish the Vancouver Canucks set, like here, you do here. Once you complete the set, you turn all those in, you lose those items, and you get a higher value item in return. In this case, a Trevor Linden um, Hockey Hero card. Um, so the, re the rewards for the sets can be, uh, can be players, it can be different items, it can be high value or more rare uniforms, it can be packs themselves. Um, so lots of different things. And again, this is something that we're going to continue to update after we launch the game as well, putting new sets out there. Um, it's a great way, it's another just depth mechanic to Hockey Ultimate Team, um, which again, we run by you know our fans through focus testing, and they absolutely love sort of the, what the, the way that the uh, whole system is working. Uh, 
Next piece is gameplay, taking control of the ice. So, you know, gameplay is the foundation of, you know, every gaming experience, sports game or not sports game. If your gameplay isn't great, all the other stuff that we're talking about really doesn't matter. So for us, um, maybe before I get right into the gameplay, I want to talk a little about our Game Changers program. Anybody familiar with our Game Changers program? If you've heard us talk a little bit before. Yeah, so um, our Game Changers program, what we did, we wanted to bring back the, the EA Sports Hockey League last year with NHL 16. Um, we had our fans, our community, nominate 12 people, um, 12 other fans to represent them as part of the development process and work closely with the development team, the production team, to really refine the feature set and then also refine the features as they were developed. So we brought them in early on, showed them the feature set. As we started to um, implement new gameplay features, new EA Sports Hockey League, the player classes, we'd bring them to the studio, they would play the game, they would give us feedback, we would make changes in real time play it again and we do this for a couple days straight. We fly them over multiple times throughout the year. They actually helped us with a lot of the tuning last year that you guys played if you played the beta last year um, before the beta went live for fans to get a first a look at NHL 16. Uh, it's been in, really it's an incredible program for us because not only um, do we get the feedback when they come to the studio but also we had a or we have a 24-7 chat going with them as well. So we can talk about uh, features we're considering for way down the road uh, and we can also talk about stuff like the puck physics or the friction on the puck when it bounces off the board. So from very, very micro stuff to macro features. Um, so it's been an invaluable resource for us because we can have that real-time chat with 12 people anytime. How we've expanded the program this year is um, last year was mostly based on the EA Sports Hockey League gameplay. This year we have representation uh, from game changers that play our offline modes, our via, our via GM, um, our franchise mode, our via pro, lots of represent representation from Hockey Ultimate Team. Uh, we have one guy in our Game Changers program from the Czech Republic, uh, so kind of represents some European interests as well. He's also a big presentation guy, a hardcore presentation guy as well. Uh, we have one guy, so if you play the EA Sports Hockey League again where it's six versus six, uh, we have one guy who is strictly a goalie guy, just plays goal, nothing but goalie. Um, so we bring him in and help us kind of refine the goalie controls that we have in the game. So it's been a fantastic, fantastic program for us. So working with our Game Changers, uh, we really want to focus this year with our gameplay on control and balance. We're giving you control in all zones of the ice. Whether you're playing in the defensive zone, the neutral zone, the offensive zone, whether you're playing as a forward, a defenseman, or a goalie, making sure that you can do what you want to do uh, kind of when you want to do it so you have that ultimate control. And so this year, uh, we've literally touched every one of our core gameplay systems on offense, on defense, with our goalies from shooting to passing to skating to pitting to poke checking to stick lifting uh, to our goalie controls themselves. And when I say sort of touch, um, we've done everything from, you know, s small things like trimming frames off of animations to make them more responsive, so they're more snappy when you actually change controls or change direction on the controller or execute a move, to rewriting parts of systems. So last year we introduced a new puck pickup system where players are picking up the puck, and or, you know our game changers, some of our fans felt like you lost a little bit of control, and so we rewrote part of those things based on part of the puck pickup system based on the feedback that we got. So when you play the game today, or if you play the beta. Uh, a lot of we experience is just a tighter feeling game, a game that has more control. A lot of people, a lot of fans, when they played the beta or played um, you know the most recent build of the game, actually can't pinpoint exactly what feels different. It just feels like you have more control. So um, that's one big piece that we did. The other thing we do with our gameplay is we take a, take a step back and we look at the way hockey is being played around the world. We look at our game versus the real world of hockey um, and look at the key pieces that maybe we're missing. And for us. The first thing that we looked at was net battles and sort of the physicality, so that battle in front of the net. Um, I'm going to play the video and just talk, talk over, it's probably the best way to do it. Uh, but if NHL 16, you'll see in the video here, you really don't have a way to tie up players in front of the net. So if you look at Pavelski and the teal, you know that he's a scoring threat because of where he is on the ice, but you don't have a way of tying him, tying him up. Uh, I mean, if you look at the battles here, battling in front of the net, you know, games are won and lost in front of the net. So with our new net battle system, um, you defensively have to decide how you're going to play the guy. Do you play him from behind? Do you tie a stick up, potentially double screening your goalie? Do you use your size and strength like Chara, trying to push the guy out in front of the net? On offense, it's up to you to go in there and establish position. If you're playing the EA Sports Hockey League, you're a bigger guy. Establish position so you can't get pushed out from in front of the net. So really, if you're playing in the EA Sports Hockey League, where you're locked to a defenseman, so playing defensively, or you're playing via pro as a defenseman, the net battle system is a new tool in your toolbox. It's something else that you can do to help counter the offense. Um, if you're just playing Play Now or any other game modes where you're not locked to um, a character, you're going to see the CPU using the net battle system again to tie up players in front of, the, in front of the net and remove some of that threat from in front. So it's a great new addition, again, an authentic part of hockey. 
um, that we've added this year that's uh, really changed sort of the flow of the game and also just giving you more tools when you're playing in those locked experiences. Uh, the next piece is goalies. Uh, so for us, when you look at the way the, the position of goalies sort of evolved over the last, you know, even 15, if you go back even 15, 20 years now, uh, Patrick Waugh coming in and, you know, focusing on butterfly and sort of changing the way the goalies play and a lot of goalies now move to butterfly and now you're seeing goalies that are hybrid goalies that are doing more kind of hybrid please stand up and butterfly. Uh, when we look at goalies and the behavior that we had in our game with NHL 16, and we want to get to a 17, one of the big things that we're seeing is so many of today's goalies, the Ben Bishops, the Markstroms, the Eddie Lacks of the world, are 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", so big and just take up so much space in front of the net, uh, or in, in the crease itself, um, that they don't need to make these big limb saves, which we had in NHL 16. So what you're going to see now this year is a couple things with our goalies. One, we have unique stances for 40 plus goalies in the league, so the goalies are going to look different right off the bat. We've captured new motion for the goalies in the crease, so the way they move in the crease is going to be different as well. And then the big new addition for us is this concept of sort of being able to get big and blocking saves versus the big reactionary saves that we've had in the past. So you'll see goalies now um, making saves which is shoulder shrugs or being tight to the post, or you'll see goalies getting jammed up um, as they're making a save, which we never, um, we never had in the past. And so, you know, the interesting byproduct of some of the new goalie saves that we've put into the game this year is because our puck is 100% physics driven, so there's no scripting on the puck at all. Um, because the goalie's making different saves and getting different positions, we're actually seeing the puck bounce off goalies differently. We're seeing different rebounds happening, which lead to different goals. Um, so it's a fantastic just new dynamic to our gameplay experience with the goalies itself. And then the last piece that we've added to the goalies is just post goal reaction. So when the goalie does get scored on, you know, we talked about sort of a more authentic look to the goalies and more authentic emotion. Uh, we're trying to add more emotion to the goalies as well. So you're going to see, depending on the time and the score and the, uh, how big the goal was, you're going to see the goalie react differently. So I'm going to show you a quick video that kind of walks through exactly what we just talked about. So some of the different goalie stances here. Well position, how high they stand, how upright they are. Some of the emotion that we captured. This is our new synthetic ice that we actually capture our, our, some of our movement on. And here's some of the saves that we captured. So again, you see the goalie just in this position, being big and just using shoulder shrugs, um, just getting in front of the puck, being positionally sound. And then some of the pulse goal, some of the pulse goal reactions based on kind of time and score. So we, you know, we talked about with our net battles, we talked about a new tool in the toolbox if you're playing. Um, as a defenseman. For goalies, if you're playing as a user control goalie, if you're playing or if you're watching the CPU um, play a net, again, this is just another tool, another way for the goalie to make saves. And the last piece, I just to play this video and just talk over it. Like I, like I mentioned before, we focus a lot on offense specifically with our shooting, our passing, our skating, um, our vision control, which is the way the players are facing to receive passes, especially for one timers in the offensive zone, trying to make it easier to score those pretty goals. And then fans are always asking for more celebrations. So we've added over 40 new celebrations from some classic hockey celebrations, some more over the top, over the top stuff that you're kind of seeing now. And we'll, I'll give you a little demo of some of my favorites. Um, there's, a, there's a kid about, probably about a month or two ago now that did a headstand in a game after scoring a goal. So we figured we'd put the headstand in there as well. So there's pretty unique ones, which we'll show you in a second. And then the last piece is our onboarding. Um, like I said, for a lot of people, uh, the controller and all the buttons can be intimidating you know, with, with you know, a lot of games out there, including, including our game. So we really want to focus on the onboarding so that any hockey fan can pick up our game, learn the basic controls, advance through, um, and just really get the most out of the experience. So we have, there's three components to our onboarding. Uh, there's the hints, so telling you the move that we want you to execute and then when the right time is to execute the move. Um, there's visualization to show you where you're shooting, where you're aiming, where you're passing the puck to help you. Um, and then also coach feedback to kind of tell you uh, what the coach wants you to do when he goes out in the ice to really hold your hand through the entire experience. So this year we've added more hands, uh, more better logic behind our visualization and more detailed coach feedback. The hints itself, um, like I said, it's an adaptive system. So you're gonna start off learning how to pass, how to shoot, very, very basic stuff. And if you know how to do that already, it's gonna advance through those very quickly. Um, we've added new hints such as um, the new net battles, how to tie up a player in front of the net. So as you progress through, we're going to teach you how to do the, do the move to tie up a player in front of the net. Um, again, with our visualization, you're going to see um, you're going to see where the goalie, where the openings are on the goalie, where you're aiming uh, with your stick as well to teach you how to aim 
um, and how to pass the puck. And the coach feedback stuff this year, uh, again, through lots of just focus testing and fan feedback, the coach is going to tell you what he wants you to do on the ice. We've added the, ability, we've added the button controls to tell you what the actual button is to do what he's telling you to do on the ice. You get on the ice itself, and then the button will show up when the right time to do it is, and then you execute the move, and then you come back to the bench and you get feedback on how well you did the move. So again, this is really about allowing our, you know, our, our, our new fans to um, learn the basic controls and work through the experience. Also, last year when we introduced this, um, it was really about the new fans coming in and getting comfortable with the controls. Uh, we got to E3, and our core fans would come up to us and they'd say, well, all this stuff on the screen is just kind of distracting to me. Can you turn it off is the first question they'd ask us. And yes, you can turn it off. And 95% of them kept it on. And within minutes, um, our core fans were saying, man, I never know how to knew how to do that reverse grip uh, face-off, where you reverse your grip and then do a stick lift. Or I never knew how to do a stride deep. So very quickly we saw that even our core fans were getting value from this system that was initially um, intended for more of our, our new fans. Um, so it's great. Again, with the adaptive system, it's about all of our fans, new or core fans, getting the most out of the experience, getting to that fun fast. Um, one other thing I'll mention, anybody get a chance to play yet? A little bit? Anybody score a goal yet? Yeah. Yeah? How many goals have you scored? Uh, did I score two? Yeah, two. Yeah, I'm I just scored one. Yeah. Oh, nice. So one of the things I'll mention is when you're playing, on, we've added a new uh, difficulty level, which is the default if you're playing. So if you didn't change any of the settings, you're playing on our new skill level. Um, it's called semi-pro. So what we found is last year people could play on rookie and score 10, 15, 20 goals, which is intentional because we want people to get comfortable sort of with controls and, and the movement. Um, but then when they jumped up to pro, which was our default last year, they had a hard time scoring. And when you're playing a hockey game, you're playing a sports game, it's always fun to score. So one of the things that we did this year is we added semi-pro, basically a bridge between our rookie and our pro settings. So when you're playing the game, I know we probably have a mix of kind of core and casual fans in here. When you're playing the game on default settings, you may see a smaller player knocking over a bigger player, um, which is maybe not super realistic, but at least you're throwing nice big hits. You may find it easy to score. Um, if I play against, as an example, if I play in CPU, I can score probably between 10 and 15 goals on the semi-pro. Um, so we made it, intentionally made it, easier to score, you're gonna see the goalie way out of position, so where you can read the, read the goalie. Um, every shot in semi-pro is a good shot, has a chance of going in. The shot accuracy is tighter, the shot speed is higher, so you're gonna see bigger hits, you're gonna see more goal scoring, um, you're gonna see the goalie out of position. I'll call that out because uh, I just talked about all the great goalie work that we did, and uh, I don't want you going in there and scoring 10 goals in your first game and say, well, the goalies aren't very good. That's intentional. Um, and it's really about, again, we talk about onboarding, allowing people to get to the fun fast, and we know that you know, scoring goals and having success is a good thing. I don't expect our fans to stay in semi-pro forever. I expect them to advance to the, more, uh, to the higher skill levels. But even when you're, one of the, one of the things is when you're playing in semi-pro, uh, because every shot's a good shot, every shot has a chance of going in, literally pushing up on the stick has a chance of going in. Um, even when I watch two core guys play on semi-pro, a lot of the goal, a lot of the games are very, very low scoring because because every shot has a chance of going in, when you block a shot and you see the goalie out of position, you pretty much there's a 95% chance you saved a goal. So the stakes on every single shot, every single defensive move or shot block are raised. So it's just a different level of sort of fun, a different way to experience a product, a different, a different type of fun. Um, if you're down two or three goals, you still have a chance to come back. Um, when you're playing the higher skill level, it's harder obviously to generate scoring chances, and when you generate higher scoring chances, the goalies are much better this year. It's a little tougher to score. So very different experience, but I just want you to know, if you go in there and start scoring lots of goals, um, semi pro is intentionally a little more arcadey, a little more fun, a little easier to pick up and play, a little easier to throw big hits, a little easier to score goals. And with that, that's the, uh, the package for NHL 17. Like I said, um, we're excited about the amount of features, the amount of stuff that we've added to NHL 17 this year with the new experiences, with our franchise mode, with our draft champions, um, with the World Cup of Hockey, with our new moments with the Be a Pro, uh, with the customization, which we're going to show you in a second as well, um, the Hockey Ultimate Team, the synergies and the, and the sets itself, the gameplay like I talked about, and the onboarding too. So um, with that, I'm going to show you a quick little demo. Um, 
I'm not going to show you everything. So again, a couple things I would say is play some gameplay to get a feel for the gameplay itself. Make, make sure you pop into franchise mode and get a feel for the depth you put in franchise mode. Go into customization as well and play around. There's some, there's some fun stuff in there. The first thing I want to show you just quickly is some of the celebrations because there's some fun ones in there. Um, any baseball fans in here? Oh, you talk about the bat, bat flip? <laughs> <laughs> the bat flip, yes. All this stuff. <laughs> no, that's yes. easy, yeah. That's a big fat asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the uh, here's the headstand that we put in the game. So a kid actually did this a little while ago. So you do that, and uh, I mean we're making games. We're making games. We want to have some little fun with it. We put the headstand in there, and then our programmers came back and said, "Hey, what if like every you know third or fourth or fifth time randomly the guy actually didn't ex execute the headstand, just kind of fell over? So every once in a while, the least regular wheel sometimes he'll he'll fall over. Uh, can anybody here in here do a one-handed push-up? We're doing a contest later. <laughs> How big is the dab in Helsinki? Uh, let's go look at the... Uh, the little back flip. And Evan likes this one, so I'll show this one for him. Go roll the boat. So <laughs> there's, some fun, there's some fun ones in here. Go in there and check that out. Um, so when you create a team, you can go in here and put your, put your information in when you create the team itself. Uh, logos. So lots of logos available. So we have the team logo, NHL team logos in there. We've got some vintage logos. Um, we have custom logos. And we talk about uh, in the Sports Hockey League, when you start off and you have minimal uh, customization available, and then you start to unlock more and more. You start to get into some, so you may start off with just a single letter that you have for your team as you build a franchise. So let's I'm gonna quickly uh, let me think of think of the Kings logo for Clem. <laughs> so once you pick your logo, you can literally customize every part of the logo itself. Let's do a little. Uh, a little purple in there. You always go for the mute. There you go. So again, you, you get the you get the idea. You, cu you can customize every every part there. So your primary and your secondary logos. Uh, let's go. To the, I'll show you a little bit of the uniforms too. So I'll pick the home. There's home away. And there's alternate uniforms. Uh, let's look at the jersey. Go through. So maybe we talked about relocation, starting fresh, and sort of building your your new look. Um, let's pick a new template. So you can pick it from any one of the templates, and then very much like very much like the logos, you can then go in there and you can actually customize all parts of it. In fact, what I'll do is go let's go to recent colors. We can start to build out a little. Uh, okay. Let's do that, and then let's go here real quick. Right, so you start to build out your uh, the look of your team. Uh, you can pick your again logos, logo placements, and fonts and things like that for the back of the jersey. Uh, the pants, the same thing. I won't uh, I won't fully customize the pants, but again, same same idea. You can go through and pick your pants style and then customize all the different zones on the pants themselves. Figure out where you want the logos on the pants too. Uh, socks, different sock styles as well. Again, again same thing. Go we'll pick your style. Sock. Gonna customize the colors. Um, let's go into let's go into arena. So pick your uh, pick your base architecture for the arena itself. Start to customize some of the colors. Let's look at the. Uh, We'll go with the, uh, we got a little bit of theme going. So it starts to customize colors, color all the walls within the arena. Let me try one more. Let me do this one here. Let's see what that does. Same thing. 
some of the walls in the luxury boxes. Uh, pick the scoreboard that you pick the scoreboard that you want. Let's go with something like that. Uh, the netting color, pick as well. This is a pretty cool one. Pick the seating pattern that you want. So a couple different seating patterns to choose from. You see there. Uh, once you pick your seating pattern, then we gotta let you customize it to uh, to your colors. There you go. Let's, let's put a secondary color in there too. Uh, the railing colors, so the railings you can also customize. Uh, stanchions. Oh, the board trim color, sorry. Let's, uh, let's change that to something else. So change the color of the boards there. This fun one. So, start to influence the presentation elements as well. So, when your team comes out for games, you can pick the props that you want. So, entrance props, something like that, maybe. So, you can pick sort of the stanchions, and when uh, when you're coming on the ice, how you want your stanchions to blink, and then obviously you can go in there and we gotta let you change the colors of it too. So you can change the colors as well. I won't bother changing the colors right now though. Uh, so signature again, if you're coming out for the intro, we're, we're customizing the intro right now. Pick if you want the testicle going off, a little fire, some smoke coming on the jumbotron, make some smoke behind, and then. We gotta let you change the colors of smoke too. Awesome. I want to. Uh, I want to show this. I want to show the smoke real quick. So change the color of the smoke too. So those are your intros, and I won't go through. I won't go through all these again. Uh, so goal, same thing. You can uh, goalie effects, like I mentioned before. A little tough to see with the lighting here, but how it flashes on the goalie when a goal is scored. So the lighting on the goalie, and again, you can change the color of that, customize the color of the, the flashing on the goalie itself. Uh, Goal horn. People love their goal horns, like I mentioned before. There's some, uh, there's some unique ones in there. I think some bagpipes could happen there. Songs as well, so intro songs, goal songs, end of game songs. Um, you see the ones that are actually uh, authentic to NHL teams with the indication there. Um, lots, 100 plus songs to choose from. Uh, there's some pretty unique ones in here. Evan was doing some karaoke last night, so. So again, lots of fun music to choose from in there. Um, and then, just again, to show you the depth, uh, you can choose your win song like we just like I showed you, and then also you can pick whether or not your team wants to salute the crowd after, uh, after a win as well. So again, lots of depth customization. With that, I recommend you guys go in there and check it out yourselves. I'll pass it over to Clint to talk about uh, some draft champions.
So we talked about um, you know draft champions uh, being the uh, the new way, one of the new ways to play. Uh, show of hands, who actually is a fan of like, fantasy hockey, uh, or participating in a fantasy hockey pool? No. Okay. Please. <laughs> you don't. You don't count. <laughs> Um, so what we uh, what we've done, you'll see uh, in a bit here. You can play. I mean, offline, online, obviously. Um, what we have done, though, to keep things fresh and interesting from a content perspective, um, you know, for the Hunt fans out there, um, you guys understand, you know, where we have Team of the Week, All Star Game, November, all that. So you'll see all those players in here, along with being able to actually pick those players uh, from the different pools. We actually have different themes now for our for our draft champs. Um, so whether you know you want to see the best, actually that's a pretty um, that's a pretty kick-ass theme. Uh, I might just pick that one. So whether you wh where you make the decision to pick the themes, that influences the players that come out of the pool that you're able to pick uh, and build your team around. So I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, the the best of the World Cup. Um, so all the players it's focused around all the players who are on on the World Cup of Hockey roster. As Rauer mentioned, the first thing you see is that your team is your team is populated with lower rates. Still, you know, good players, um, but it's pre-populated. And really, the goal is to you know upgrade in key positions. Uh, you know, I'm a more offensive offensive guy, so I like to have you know maybe two or three lines that are plus you uh, that are you know kind of more uh, balanced on the offensive end. But some guys that like to play that emphasize defense as well. Um, you know, they might want to make their um, picks on the defensive uh, defensive side. So, um, you know, I'm going to go, unless there's uh, any objection, I think I'm going to go with uh, with Vlad here, um, just because I think he's the, the player that mimics uh, Pavel Burry the most in, uh, in, in terms of current hockey, hockey players. Um, not really a Canucks fan, but Pavel Burry is, uh, was a hero of mine growing up. Uh, so pick two. So you'll notice that, um, you know, they're not necessarily always the same position. The first, um, the first pick was, uh, you know, a bunch of top line forwards, but then you can also get a mix of center and, and wingers or def defense and, uh, and and forward. So it really forces you to, to make interesting choices based on um, you know where kind of the strengths and weaknesses are in the current lineup. Um, I, I gotta pick Claude Giroux, um, another one of my favorite favorite players, very underrated. Um, but because I'm also I, I need a centerman, um, you know, kind of strengthen my my top two my top two lines. Oh man, look at that! Um, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? That's a rivalry pick. Right there. <laughs> uh, do you know? What? I'm gonna go with Shea Weber. Uh, Shea, like I said, I like to to draw bombs from the from the line. So, um, and my right D, I could use upgrade. So I'm gonna go with Shea Weber here. Good choice. Yeah. Solid. <laughs> what if I pick Suvan? If Suvan was there, will I be less of a solid choice? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna continue uh, continue making picks unless you guys have a choice you want to make. Um, I already have a right D. I, I love I love Brent Burns. Uh, he has awesome awesome facial hair, awesome beard. But I need some speed up front, so I'm gonna pick Mr. Matt Duchesne from Colorado here. So start you'll start getting a sense of um, you know in, in addition to kind of the the, the ratings and, and overall. Of course, you can definitely. You know, pick that way your favorite player is the highest rating. But if you know the the extra depth that comes in is where you understand what those key attributes are and how they can fill spots in your lineup. European line, Backstrom or Hedman? Who do people like? Hedman. Hedman. Yeah. yeah. He is. Uh, a good choice. He is a beast on defense. Next is a Norris Trophy. He what? Next is a Norris Trophy winner. Yes. <laughs> might mark it down already. Possible. Possible. <laughs> Also play for Moto. Um, so as you can see, they're not just offensive top liners or, or blue liners. There's some depth players in here as well. Um, I am going to continue with the, the speed theme because I'm more of a, uh, I like to go down the, the wing and setup. So I'm going to go with uh, Mr. Bodker here from the San Jose Sharks. Well, being LA fan is probably not the, the wisest, wisest pick. Well, this one's easy. <laughs> Mr. Go, Koibu. Go with the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish the draft here. Um, so even like uh, like Pavel, Pavel Datsuk, so 
Uh, Brian mentioned it, for as part of World Cup, we get the pass through rights, um, you know, for for Pavel Datsyuk because he's a retired player now. So, but part of as part of the World Cup, we're now able to to have him in the lineup as well. Um, actually, he's one of my favorite players. so I'm going to go with him. Yeah, I like to I like to play that way. Yeah. You're strong up front. Um, so I don't need any more centers right now, um, but it looks like I can use an upgrade. Uh, your friend, JV, Mr. JVR. It's important to get a power forward to, to drive to the net. Um, like I mentioned, I like to drive from the point, so you can help me get some rebounds. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, I already have Headman, but I can use uh, some scoring depth on my right wing, so I'm going to go with Marion Hosa here. I don't know if you guys noticed, but then you're also you're also showing a preview of you know where that where that player slots into. I don't know if you see the back where that player slots a slot and the, play, the lower rate player that's going to be dropped off. Um, what do you guys think, Tuca or Pekka? Pekka. Pekka. Good choice. So uh, I'm I've upgraded my my goalie. I was a bit worried there. I wouldn't uh, get a high higher goalie. Uh, now the last round. So this is where the uh, this is where the uh, you know the sweet sweet reward is for getting to the to the twelfth round. Um, you know I'm I'm already stacked at center. Uh, I don't really need Sidney Crosby because I'll drop off uh, I'll drop off Miko there. Local boy Vic from Victoria, close to Vancouver. I don't know. Like, do I go with him or or do I go with Vetchkin? Right. So I'm. I'm sad to say I'm going to pass up uh, Jamie Ben, but I have to go with my man, uh, Mr. Ovechkin here. Um, he can do anything, skate, shoot, lay on the body, uh, just a threat in the defensive zone. So I'm going to go ahead and pick him, insert my lineup, see who drops my line. And uh, you know what, Teravainen's still, still in there, so I'm happy about that. Finish the draft, and I'm showing uh, you know, how, how well I've done. So. A pretty balanced team, a bit better on offense. Um, like I said, I wanted to kind of strategize and emphasize the offensive, uh, offensive firepower front. That's again, Vlad, my best players. And then I can just go into straight into game, offline or online, head to head. Um, and really, the key thing is understanding as a hut player, jumping in here first, seeing all the cool players that you can get. Again, the, all the different themes and variations, but that everything I do in here ties into uh, getting rewards for Ultimate Team, and they're exclusive rewards for playing draft. So things like you know getting getting new collectibles from, from playing, turning them into the new dynamic set system will, will actually unlock uh, exclusive, uh, you know, high, like 90, uh, we were still tuning it, but like get a 92, 93, 94 rated player, if you play 50, 75, 100 games, get those collectibles, turn it in. So there's really engaging element there, a new way to play HUD as well in addition to uh, the synergy and sets that we talked about earlier. So, um, with that in mind, I think yeah. we're ready to... Yeah, uh, you guys, yeah, let's play. So, um, we mentioned up top, I'll say it again. Unfortunately, Draft Champions does not work on the PlayStations. It's only working here for Xbox. So, uh, we'll start off a few people in here. If you're really interested in that mode, we'd love for everybody to be able to try it. Please rotate into an Xbox. Um, and uh, the folks that are in there first can kindly rotate out and try other modes on PlayStations. But other than that, please uh, go ahead and play. If you have any questions, come grab one of us. And I know that was a little bit longer than we promised, so thank you for, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for your attention.